Hi, I'm Jason Barnard and I'm the Brand SERP Guy. I'm going to show you a three-step process to check if your site is correctly indexed by Google. Here are the three checks you should do to see if Google has too many or too few of your website's pages in its index. Step one, really easy. What do you think you have? This really is an exercise to see whether you know your site as well as you think you do. It might seem pointless, but do it anyway. I promise it will give you food for thought. Firstly, how many pages do I think I have in total? Write that number down. It'll probably be wrong. Secondly, how many pages do I think I have in each logical part of my site? Language versions, country versions, the blog, the product section, the FAQ section, the support section. Write those numbers down too. They'll probably be wrong too. Step two, what does Google think you have? Here, your friend is site with a colon like this. First thing, what is the total number of pages Google thinks I have on my site? Check how many pages are in Google's index using this syntax. Notice there's no www there. That means it will show me all the pages, including the subdomains and the subfolders. Now, you'll see the total right there above the results. How close is that to your guess from part one of this video? If there's a big discrepancy, then you're in good company. Most people have this issue. If it's close, then you're either really good about knowing your site, or you were lucky, or you only have a few dozen pages. Now do the same thing for each logical part of your site. If your site is well organized, this will be easy as pie. You should be able to isolate different sections and language versions of your site using subdomains like this, or folders like this. You might also need to use a mixture like this. If you can isolate obvious areas of your site simply like this, then you have a good solid base for SEO. A well-organized site with sections that are easily identifiable by their URL structure is fundamental to SEO. If you can't, then you've organized your site badly and Google will be having trouble understanding it. And that means you're putting yourself at a major disadvantage in SEO and your site is almost certainly underperforming. If that's the case, then get professional help. Seriously. If it's done well, this can be a major win for your organic traffic from Google, but get it wrong and you'll lose the lot. This is definitely not something you should do on your own. Unless, of course, you have a site that contains only a few dozen pages. But in that case, you wouldn't be watching this video in the first place. Now, step two's done. How wrong were you? We won't actually use the totals from step one from now on. But the simple question in that first step puts you to the test about how well what you think you have corresponds to what Google thinks you have. And that's a useful exercise to have done. And that leads us really nicely onto the crux of this episode. Step three, what are you telling Google you have? In this part, think Google has a hard job trying to figure out thousands of billions of pages every day from sites that are for the most part badly organized. You know how your site is organized and which pages are important. Communicate that clearly and accurately to Google, help Google, and it will help you. XML sitemaps are the key. They're phenomenally important since you're explicitly telling Google what useful content you have to offer its users. Getting that wrong is a big missed opportunity. XML sitemaps are the single best way you have for telling Google what pages you have, which ones have recently changed, and which ones are new. Some sites don't even have an XML sitemap. And that means they can't even be bothered to help Google a little by telling it what they have that might be of interest to Google's users. Now, XML sitemaps are made for machines. 
They're super easy for Google to digest, and that's wonderful, but they're a little bit harder for human beings to read. So the best way for you to look at them is through Search Console. This is where you can tell Google where to find that beautifully organized list of pages you've created for machines like Google. So go to Search Console, and if you haven't added your sitemaps there already, do that now. If you don't know where your XML sitemaps are, then ask your webmaster or developer. To add a sitemap, just enter the internet address of the sitemap and submit. You'll then have a screen like this. Now there's a link in the description below so that you can watch Google's training on how to do this. Now look at the numbers on the right. Does the total number of pages in your XML sitemap correspond to the number you got in step two? Probably not. Now, Let's do the same for the logical sections of your site. If you can, break your XML sitemaps down into languages and sections. And if you can't do that because your sitemaps aren't organized in the same way you organize the content on your site, then you should think about why they aren't organized in the same way. Perhaps get some professional help to get them to match as far as is reasonably possible, both so that you can perform this check properly but also because it helps Google enormously if you present your content in your XML sitemaps in the same way it's organized on your site and in your mind. Now, in terms of the numbers, do the totals for each language and section correspond to the numbers you got from Google search results in step two? My bet is they don't. But don't get too upset. When I first start working with a client, I always do this exercise, and it's very rare that the numbers match. Usually, there are large discrepancies. Less than 10%, then you're doing okay. But it's always a good move to do some housekeeping and get those totals as close as possible to the actual number of quality, useful pages you're offering to Google. With a discrepancy of less than 20%, you'll benefit by giving Google some help by cleaning up your act. The difference in the number of useful pages you have and the number Google thinks you have really does need to be closer than 20%. Getting that difference to a minimum will help your organic search performance. Anything over 20% and you have a serious problem that's handicapping your SEO efforts and almost certainly losing you a big chunk of organic traffic from Google. Now, what can you actually do? Well, the exact solutions will depend on the source of the problem. Each problem and each solution could be the subject of a video the same length as this one, or even longer in some cases. And there are, of course, videos on each out there on YouTube. So have a look. Do some research. This is simply a list of pointers to arm you for the work ahead. It's a list of the weapons you have at your disposal to get those totals aligned. Remember, which ones are needed will depend on the reasons for the discrepancies. Now, be warned, for major discrepancies, a DIY job is almost certainly a bad idea. In those cases, I strongly recommend that you call in a professional to help you. For smaller discrepancies and just tidying up, you could look into it yourself. If you do choose to do this, research the topics thoroughly before taking action. In either case, be very, very, very careful. Remember, fixing a big issue like this will boost your SEO. Getting it wrong could absolutely kill your SEO. So a good degree of caution is absolutely, strictly necessary. Thank you.